I thought, well, they're going to blow up and my mic's too hot. <laughs> well, welcome. Good to see everyone. Happy Sunday. It's a chilly Sunday. Promise next, well, I guess I can't promise. We're, the goal is to have it warm in here next Sunday, <laughs> is my understanding. So, we apologize if you're a little shivery, but I look at it this way, we'll lose weight during service, because we'll <laughs> be shivery and stay warm. So we'll open with a word of prayer and have some praise and worship. Father God, we thank you for today. We thank you for this opportunity to gather. We welcome you here, Lord. We ask that you feel blessed, that you feel loved, that you hear our praises. We ask that you speak through us, speak through Pastor Kelly to us today, God. We just ask that we are changed and transformed and your will is done here. In Jesus' name, amen. If you could stand, we'll have some praise and worship. Let's go. 
is when you talk about Daniel and Moses and David, they also screwed up a lot. Yeah. <laughs> and that gives me hope. <laughs> and he calls them for greatness, and they still screwed up, and he still said, that's okay. So I just know, I like that song a lot. Um, so just a couple of announcements for this week. Um, Wednesday, continuing back with the Book of Romans. Um, I think that's going to be for a little while. It's on. It's just, he always gives me instruction from the front row. <laughs> um, on Sunday, we will have Change for Change, where we're collecting money for the House of Promise to be able to bless them. And also, the potluck after service, there is a sign-up sheet by the back door. If you could just write down if you have an idea of what you think you'll bring. To me, it kind of seems almost like it's a meatball-themed Potluck. Yeah, you're bringing meatballs. I think Millie's bringing meatballs. So thinking in the meatballish theme. <laughs> what you want to bring? Yeah. Well, I think we were trying to see what people would like to bring, and then filling in the gaps. So we didn't want to keep doing the same meats all the time. So I think Ruth, the idea was see what we have, and then we'll try to fill in. And if there's not a main meat or something, but I know we're going to have some. So, I believe someone is coming Wednesday to address the heat, correct? Yes. We're yes. The heat so, I apologize. It is very cold in here. We have the heat on in the basement, and heat is supposed to rise. So, <laughs> we were hoping it would start coming up by now. But, yeah, there's uh, it's the heat in this part of the building is out versus the old, correct? I think those downstairs are right? Yeah, so the downstairs heat is working. Yeah. It's just up here. Um, okay. And Wednesday's the guys are coming. So we might have to start running. <laughs> We're probably real Pentecostal today and start running for ourselves. <laughs> um, so next Sunday, the potluck. Bring a friend if you can after service. Uh, November 5th, Pastor has planned for bonfire, weather permitting. If it's not a bonfire, it'll be like last time where we do a backup of a movie night downstairs. Um, also, Pastor would like to see if there's interest in a membership class. We have some new faces. And... There's not a time or a date set, but if you would like to become a member and participate, uh, talk to pastor or email pastor and let him know. And depending on the interest and who's available to participate, then you'll go ahead and schedule that. Um, also, as always, please join us for pre-service prayer in Sunday school. Very powerful things happening. If you can make it, that would be awesome. If you can't, pre-service prayer is in the little room off of the sanctuary at 930. You pray for about 20 minutes before the service, and then Sunday school is at 10. Continuing to work through the spiritual warfare. I think we have a few more chapters left in that. Um, but that's very powerful. So if you can join us, that would be great. I think that's all correct. Did I get everything? Okay. All right. Thank you. Pastor Kelly. today. Um, thanks for coming. I appreciate you guys coming. Yesterday we had our fall festival, the first one on, like under under my leadership but uh, I think it went good so I just want to thank everybody who could, could make it yesterday. Thank you for coming. We had some families here. We had a bounce castle and some kids bounced and uh, we had some face painting and some other things too. Donuts. Lots of games. Things like that. So it was good though. Man, it's about blessing the community. And be a part of the community. You know, I'm just saying, church is good, but we want to be, we want to extend church outside of this building. We want to be, we want to be the hands and the feet and the voice of Jesus. When people come up here, they know they're speaking to Jesus because Jesus lives in us, right? So we take, every, we take church everywhere we go. That's, you know, some, that's a different concept for some churches and some denominations. You know, when they say, oh, go to church. You know what? Church is in us. We bring church everywhere we go. We have a party. Yes. It's about a party. But I want to start off first by saying, um, if you and the people, and if you're watching today online, we have a website, and uh, please go visit it. Um, and, uh, and on our website, you'll find information about our church. Uh, you'll find this information about our events, about services. It links you to our YouTube um, page, and uh, you know, just take a look at it. Um, and just you know, it's always updated. I always update it because I want to keep everybody current with the current news, right? When you watch TV, you don't just, you don't, you're not watching news about last week, you're watching about within the last 24 hours, right? 
So I always try to update it. All right. Um, for all you prayer warriors, but we're all called to be prayer, so we're actually all prayer warriors. Um, if you'd like to partner with us in prayer, because we all need prayer all the time. This church needs prayer. This building needs prayer. We need to pray for our building. Pray for other things that need to be fixed. Pray for heat today. So if you'd like to partner with us in prayer at Lance Recovery, that would be awesome. If you'd like to partner with us financially, you know, while we're doing things in the community, and, you know, it takes finances, and uh, if, if God tells you to put a seed into our offering, into our plate, which our plates are back there, I never say anything because, you know what, the offering is really the least, the least thing on my mind. I'm about doing what God's business and doing my thing up here. So our offering plates are back there. And uh, they're on both sides right there. So if God, you know, tells you to, if you, if God, if you feel like God's telling you, you know what, I want to see it into this ministry, our ministry, not my ministry, our ministry, you know, let just be obedient. All right. Everybody doing good? Yeah. All right. I know it's cold, so I'm saying you're just going to have to do your hands like back and forth. Pokey pokey. All right, I'm going to start off first of all. I'm going to put I'm going to play this video, and uh, this is the video that goes along with our sermon today. Right there. What's up, coach? How strong is Westy this year? About well, stronger than we are. You already written Friday night down as a loss, bro. Well, not if I know we can beat him. Come here, bro. You too, Jerry. What am I in trouble now? Not yet. I want to see you do the death crawl in here, except I want to see your absolute best. <laughs> <laughs> what? You only got a 30? I can go to 50. 50? <laughs> I can go to 50 if nobody's on my back. I can go with Jerry on your back. But even if you can, I want you to promise me you're going to do your best. All right. Your best. Okay. You're going to give me your best. I'm gonna give you my best. All right, one more thing. I want you to do a farm for me. One, two. And I want you to give it up at a certain point where you can go further. Get down. Jeremy, get on his back. <laughs> it's a good tight hold, Jeremy. All right, let's go, bro. Keep your knees off the ground. Let's your hands and feet. There you go. A little bit left. A little bit left. There you go. It's gonna be good effort. That way, bro. Keep coming. There you go. It's a good start. A little bit left. A little bit left. There you go, bro. Good strength. That's it, bro. That's it. Forget the 20. You give me your best. You keep going. That's it. No, don't stop, bro. You got more in you than that. Hey, there. Just rest for a second. You gotta keep moving. Let's keep moving. Let's go. Don't quit till you got nothing left. There you go. Keep moving. Keep moving. Keep moving, bro. That's it. You keep driving. Keep your knees off the ground. Keep driving. Your very best. Your very best. Your very best. Keep moving, bro. That's it. That's it. That's it. Keep going. Don't quit on me. Keep going. Keep driving. Keep your, keep your knees off the ground. That's it. Your very best. Don't quit on me. Your very best. Keep driving. Keep driving. There you go. There you go. Keep driving. Keep your knees off the ground. Keep driving. Don't quit till you got nothing left. Keep moving, bro. That's it. That's it. That's it. Keep going. I want everything you got. Come on. Keep going.
shows you the power of grit. And uh, I want to put up here. Um, so grit, so, you know, it shows, this video shows you the power of grit. And it's good to be have grit and be gritty. You have to, you have, it's good to have grit and be gritty. It's, it's good. Um, to have grit means you have courage and show the strength of your character. You show the strength of your character. And the person with grit has passion and, and, and understands the concept of perseverance and endurance. Man, grit. You know what? Grit. I like that video because it's, you know what? He, first he said, you know what? He said, give me 50 yards. Can you do it? Yeah, I can do it. And I feel like the coach is kind of like, like God. He's just like, can you do this? And, and we're just using, we, we like to answer call, his call, God's call, saying, yeah, I think so. I think I can do this. But God is just, he's stretching us and he's, and, he, and, he's, and he's molding us. And, he, and we, we can do more than we think through, through Jesus. Amen. And it takes grit in life. It takes grit in life to, to, to accomplish God's goals. Because God calls people. He calls you. And you, it's up to you if you answer that call. And it takes grit to just continue and to run the race. It takes grit to go to your job and, and do, a, do your job at a, at a high um, ability. You know, it, it, take, it, takes, it takes grit to, you know, just uh, your boss gives you an assignment and you stick and you do it to the end. We don't do it. We don't stop when we're tired. We're stop, we stop when it's done. Grit, grit will keep people in a marriage because it takes grit to be married. Because let's be truthful, now you don't always get along with your spouse. They make you mad at times. They do things. They cook you dry food sometimes. <laughs> but you got but you know what? Grit keeps you together. You gotta be gritty. It takes grit in, in all aspects of life. You have to be grit. You have to have grit. And that means that you have to understand the concept of perseverance and endurance. Because I really feel that uh, you know God calls people to certain things that they, they 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 answer the call, but it takes perseverance and endurance to continue. Because yeah. people walk out in Christianity, people walk out on leadership. You know, people are called to be a pastor. They walk out because they don't have grit. And I'm not talking bad about anybody. I'm just telling you, you have to, you got to be gritty. You have to have grit. You know, gritty people have the ability to set goals and keep grinding to reach them. And the grind is where the battle takes place. That's the meat and potatoes of the fight. That's the meat and potatoes of the fight. It's where commitment is, is, is tested. Because we all, everybody has to do with, um, we're all tested on a daily basis. We get tested at our jobs, um, in our marriages, at our church, you know, and this, and just different things. We're tested. And if you're not committed to the cause, you're going to fall off and you're going to drop off the fight. And God might have said, he, he didn't call us to drop off. He doesn't call you so you can quit or to drop out of her. He might stretch you because people don't like to be stretched because it hurts. But God never breaks you. He'll stretch you though. He stretches you into the person that he wants you to be. 
And it's, a lot of times it's, it's, it's different than what you think that you're going to be. Because God, God knows, God knows, he knows you better than you know yourself. But I believe that uh, I believe that because of lack of grit, you know, Christians are dropping out, dropping out of the, the race that God has taught them every day. We have people that are just giving up on their faith. You know, they're forgetting about God and everything that He's done for them, and He's just saying, "You know what? I'm done. I'm through with this." Because it gets a little tough. It's not the wrong with being. It's not the wrong with going through tough seasons of life because it, it helps you. It, it builds you. It, it, it helps develop more faith. But I, I believe that some Christians are getting soft. You know, I, I believe they're getting soft. You know, instead of just, you know, listening to the Holy Spirit and letting the Holy Spirit guide them, they're just kind of, they're just doing their own thing. And they're just, when it gets a little, when it gets a little bit uh, uncomfortable, they just want to just walk away and just say, I'm done. But we need to burn bright for Jesus. We need to burn bright for Jesus. We don't, we need a, a steady flame. We don't need any, 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 uh, we need our flame to be steady. We don't want to flicker because when you flicker, that means that it's not, it's like you're not being fully submitted to God. And people are getting caught up in the world. Christians are getting caught up in the world and everything it has to offer because the world looks good. It looks good from a distance, but once you get into it, it's just full of just bad stuff, drugs, sex, lots of different things, doesn't it? Isn't it? It's bad. It's not good. And we're picking up, and, and, and when you when you start becoming, when you start interacting with the world and, and living like the world, you start picking up worldly tools that are destructive, right? You start you start walking around in manipulation. You start walking around in anger and offense. Matthew twenty four verses ten and twelve said, and this is about end times. And then many will be offended, will betray one another, and will hate one another. And because lawlessness will abound, the love of many will grow cold. This is saying offense, being offended, betrayal, hatred, lawlessness will lead to cold Christianity. And you see this right now. There's some cold Christians. They're cold. Some Christians look so much like the world that you can't even tell them apart from, from people in the church. You can't stop, you know, you walk up to somebody, you should be able to know that this person is a follower of Christ by just within the, like the first like minute or so, less than a minute. But sometimes some people in the church, you don't even know if you don't even know if they're following Jesus or following the devil or following themselves. And instead of being a light, some of these Christians, they, they, they make things dark. Instead of being a salt, which the Bible says we're supposed to be, they're more like pepper. But this isn't a time to look away from Jesus and towards the world. Because the world's going to be destroyed. It's not a time to be questioning God or the Bible. The, Bible, the God's word is, is true, isn't it? It's true. It's been true. It's been true for eternity. God's word and, his, um, and God and his word has never changed. It's always been us who changed. We always, we, we change. And we change the word. We change God to, to match our life. We come to we come to where God, the image of God in His Word, to match what we want in life. And, and, and as, as you know, like BK Burger King, we all like the different things on our whoppers, and we like them all prepared differently, right? We're the home of the whopper. <laughs> we got we're the home of the whopper, and we and, and we have Christians that just think, you know what? God can do this. The word, the word, I'm, God's gonna twist a little the word for me because I'm, I like it this way. I have preferences. God don't care about preferences. He don't care about. He really doesn't care about like what you want. It's about His agenda. It's about His ways. Oh, but God's creation has always fought with uh, with God about lordship. We, we we we've always fought about lordship. Who's the Lord of our life? A lot of people say, well, it's me. Okay, that's why your life is so crazy looking right now. They fought about, they fought with God about direction. Which direction should I go? Sometimes people take detours, and do you know that you can take a detour and it can just, it can, it can throw off your whole eternity? You take a detour, one detour can mess you up for life. In fact, then you backslide right to hell. And the devil knows, the devil likes detours. He loves detours because he knows if he can get you up, get you on a detour, he knows that you're you're farther away from God than you ever than you ever will um, be. He likes um, we fought about we fought with God about obedience. 
in pretty much everything in life, everything in life, like humans have, have always fought with God. And God's the creator. And it's kind of just like, it has to make God, God has to have so many, many emotions. You know, he's probably, he's sad, he's angry, he just wants to whip our butt sometimes. But it's like, you know what, but it's just like, I, I, I feel, man, it's just like, I feel God is just, he, he's, he's heartbroken because he, he made us for relationship. He made us so, you know, we can have, um, um, we can have fellowship with him, but we want a different route. So there's, you know, but the thing about it is, um, you know, some of us have given total worship of our life to God. And these, and, and we're the people, we're the people, even though we're not perfect in any sense, because we all have flaws. We all have flaws and areas where we struggle. Uh, we made a decision to live an upright life for God, right? It's, it, and, and, you, and you hear it when I said it's conscience. It's, it's a conscience. It's, it's conscience. Conscience. Um, when I say conscience, I mean deliberate, purpose, purposeful, planned, intentional choice. We're choosing God. God gave us free will, but we're choosing, we still choose God even though we have other choices. That's how you know somebody loves you. If somebody has other choices and they choose you, that shows you real love. That just shows you real commitment. With church, you know, people could people you could be here, you could be in another church. You could be in Mount Hope. You could be at you know, what Lansing First, East Lansing First, whatever it's called. But I know that people here that come on a regular basis, they have made a choice to be here. And I and I, and I thank you for that. But we've made a choice. We made a choice to follow God, and we we live a God-centered life um, with our choices, our attitudes, our behaviors, our words, and everything in between. So that's what that's what worship is. It's about basically giving total control of your life to God. And like I said, like I said earlier, like I said um, just a couple minutes ago, you know, we don't always get it right, and that's okay because we we do get it wrong at times. But it doesn't, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't matter because God is merciful. He's, he's graceful. And he knows, he knows us. He knows we're going to screw up. He knew that, um, you know, he knew Adam and Eve were going to screw up. But he still did it. He still created them. But today we're going to examine the power of focus. And focus is something that we have to, man, we have to have focus in life. If we don't have focus in life, you're just, you're, a lot of times if you don't have focus in life on the right things, you're focusing on the wrong things and you're trying for the wrong target. If I shoot a gun, and if I'm not going to have a target, I'm shooting at anything. But today, we're going we're gonna to examine the power of focus. And today's, the title of today's sermon is called Push. we got to keep on pushing for that focus in our life. All right, let's, let's pray before we before start to get into the meat and potatoes. Dear God, I thank you for today. Um, God, I just ask you to anoint this message, God, about focus, God. I know that you've called all of your followers to a, a life of focus toward you, towards you and your word. You and your word. God, just help us help us understand this, 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 uh, this, these concepts about perseverance and endurance, endurance, God, and, and focus, God, and just, you know, plant them in our heart, God, water them, and help them become much more, um, just mature, God. And we thank you in Jesus' name, amen. All right. I want to show you this quote right here on the screen. This quote says, you don't get what you want in life, you get what you focus on in life. And it, is, it, is a, it is a good quote. It's a great quote. That's why I put it up here. <laughs> um, but we, you know, we all have wants in life. You know, you have wants, I have wants. But the key is not what I want, what I need or want. It's about what you focus on. What you focus on is what you're going to get. If you focus on, if you focus on having a good time and just leaving the Jesus, uh, God out the equation, that's what's going to happen. You're going you're gonna to get what you, what you sow. Yeah. But focus is a real thing that many people push to the sidelines and give no weight to. They don't think, you know, people don't understand the whole power of focus. You know, when you focus, you know, the thing about focus is that you don't give it a second look, but it's part of your life. Everybody in this, in this, in this room has, we, we all deal with the concept of focus on a daily basis. You know, and I, and I believe that little or lack of focus often, bring, it often brings bitterness to your life. It brings resentment to your life. And it brings 
it brings a lot of things to our, the front porches, the front porches of our existence. We all have a front porch to our existence. You know, and I've learned the life that having little focus gets you little results. Everybody wants results. When you go on a diet, you want results, or you get you get frustrated, right? If I'm focusing on my weight and I, I'm not seeing any results, you know, you start getting frustrated. Man, why aren't the pounds coming off? It could be that you, you maybe they're not focusing on the right thing. Maybe you're focusing on the exercise and you're not focused on like portion control or what you eat, you know? It's different things. But you know, we're all we're all better than this. We're all we all we we're all better than than sometimes what we focus on. You know, we're we're called to be game changers. We're all called to be game changers. We're in, we're called to impact the world for God. This is only this only happens when you have focus. Yesterday was a prime example. It was, it was it, we had a false fall festival, and I focused on the community. Those things just don't happen. It's not just like, when, you know, we came to church, all of us came to church, and a bounce house showed up. You know, it was a focus. It's a prime focus. I'm, I'm, my heart is for the community and the focus outside this building. I want people to come in the building, but sometimes, you know, we have to go outside and find people and get them because they're never going to step into the church. So that's something that we, you know, that's, that should, this should be a focus on everybody at this church. It's the, you know, when we're outside the building, focus on the loss. Focus on the poor. Focus on the people that are disheartened. Because that's where it's at. That's what God has called us to. And we have to keep on pushing forward. We have to maintain our focus. And God's redeemed us through Jesus and we're righteous in God's eyes. We're righteous. No matter what you did yesterday or what you did said yesterday or did yesterday, we're righteous because of Jesus. And everywhere we go now, we're called to represent Jesus 24-7. It's not, it's not a moment in time. And I want you to understand this. There's not a moment in time. There's not a, a lapse of time where we don't represent Jesus. You represent him in here, at home, at the gas station, everywhere you go. And that's, that's really important because, you know, sometimes we forget. Sometimes, you know, we have people that just forget, you know, well, I go to church and represent Jesus. God, there. I, I go somewhere and represent. You know, you do it all the time. The way that you treat people, the way that you interact with people, you're always on the clock with God. There's no, there's no breaks. There's no retirement. This isn't a secular, this isn't a secular thing, a secular thing. This is a God thing. And we're going to represent, we represent God everywhere until we take our last breath. But we're called um, to walk with God in all times, in all situations, in all seasons. Some of us go through different seasons. Some of us are in different seasons right now. But we're called to walk with God in, in all of life, every aspect of our life. But it takes grit to do this. It takes focus and grit to accomplish this task, but we can do it. We can do it. Let's turn on um, 1 John 4.4. 4. And we do this, we, 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 oh, we, we can uh, walk in, we can accomplish this task of walking with God through Jesus. 1 John 4.4 4 says, you are, you are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because he who is, he is, in, who, he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. Jesus overcame sin and death. Because of this, we can, come, we can overcome anything that comes our way. We have victory through Jesus. Amen. Victory through Jesus. And because of that, because of Jesus, we can live a focused life if we choose to. We can overcome if we choose to. We can have a good attitude if we choose to. We can be brave if we choose to. That song that we sing, confidence. All those people that, that, that the song says, you know what, they have to overcome, they have to overcome things, and they did it with grit. Even though they did some crazy stuff, like my wife said, you know, they overcame with focus and grit, perseverance, endurance. But the question is, is what, are you, what are you choosing? What, are you, what do you choose to do? Because you do have a choice every day. 
We have a choice every day. We have a choice with our, our focus. Well, um, if we're gonna if we're gonna be um, an overcomer, if we're just gonna be like like just like just knock us down all the time, we're, we have a choice with our attitude. Are you gonna wake up with a uh, with a nasty attitude, or are you just gonna be are you gonna be positive? Are you gonna be brave, or are you just gonna walk around with your tail between your legs and just say, "Oh, poor me, Eeyore." But you do, we do have power and authority that comes from God to make choices. We have, we have power and authority. You know, God didn't create robots when he made us. He gave us free will. And that free will, that free will is awesome because, you know, God could have just made robots, you know, we could be metal, but he's given us free will to respond to things, how we, our attitudes, you know, what we focus on. I'm glad that he's given us free will. Aren't you? We're not pre-programmed in our head to like just, you know, to, to, to act a certain way. That'd be very boring if everybody just, everybody just see everything the same way. We wouldn't like each other because we'd, we'd be bored. We'd be, we'd be too much alike. That's why people that are really alike, they bump heads a lot. Don't they? They bump heads. And sometimes it's your kids though and you're just like, oh man, they get on my nerves. It's probably because they're acting just like you. But we have choices to make every day, and the key to this dynamic is focus. And free will without focus is dangerous. Because God does give us, He did give us free will, but if you have no focus, you're not, you're really, um, you have no target. And we all need to have a target that we're aiming for. You, you, you can say goal, you can say target, but we have to have something that we're shooting for. And when you're without a target, you're aiming at things that usually appeal to your flesh. If you think about it, what, what, what's appealing, appealing to the flesh? And we know that the spirit and the flesh, they fight daily. They fight, they're, they're fighting daily. If we could see that fight, it would be two spiritual fists um, punching each other in the face. And they've been, they've been fighting ever since sin entered, entered into the world. Spiritual warfare. But the great thing about this battle, about the flesh and the spirit, is that Jesus defeated the flesh and defeated sin. So no sin no longer controls you. Amen. Amen. You don't have to be overcome by sin. You can't. You know, we're free. We're free. I want, just turn, right now, just turn to your neighbor or whoever's by you and say, I'm free. That's like that song you said, I'm free to dance, I'm free to sing, I'm free to worship, I'm free to be happy. <clears throat> In the fear, I'm saying, you know, all this means that we're victorious. We're victorious. We're champions. It means no matter what comes your way, you've already won. We've already won. Things might come into your life. Things are going to come in your life. Just like we learned, you know, we learned um, spiritual warfare. Fiery darts are always being flung, uh, flung at us. But we've already, we're already victorious. If one of them happens to jab us in our, in our side, we've already won. It may hurt. Because being gritty does hurt sometimes. It doesn't mean that it's not going to hurt. But I want everybody right now to say triumphant. Jesus has already won and we have also. And you can live out this mindset if you live, with a, a, live a life with focus. It's all about the focus. I think about, I think about when, I, when I was younger and I didn't wear glasses and I put on my mom's glasses and I remember I couldn't see. I'm like, man, these, what's wrong with these? Like, you know, because you don't really, you know when you're a little kid, you don't really ask your parents about like glasses or anything like that. And I remember putting them on. I'm like, man, it's like it just everything looked like really blurry or whatever. But it's kind of just like that. Just think about going through life like that every day with no focus. How frustrated would you be? You can't read signs. You can't interpret anything. You can't comprehend like anything. You read. You go to a restaurant and read a menu and just like, what is this? I just want this. You just point to things. That's how it is. And you don't even know what you're ordering. You don't even know what you're pointing at. I'm going to a restaurant. I'm going to put it here. Okay, they bring you out some, some crazy dish, critters. 
That's how, that's how it is. That's how life without focus is. You just, you're, you're, you're just, you're, you're aiming at targets and you're, you're, you're just, you're, you're grabbing onto things that, that, that you don't even belong grabbing onto and after that things enter into your life. That's why you got to be very careful who you grab onto. I'm talking about friends and jobs and, and spouses and everything like that. You got to be careful. Because the devil knows this, and he knows that, like, man, he know he'll put somebody in your path. Because the devil will use anybody he can. He'll use a person. He'll use an inanimate, inanimate object. He'll do anything he can to put into your path when you don't. When he, when you, he knows that you don't have focus, just to throw you and get you to stumble. He'll put a rock in front of you. All right, let's turn to if you could turn to Second Corinthians. Uh, chapter 5, verses 14 to 21. And this is about this is about our new life. New life equals new focus. Right? The day that we the day that we came to that we that we made Jesus Lord of our life, that's the day that we had um, a new focus in life. <clears throat> is anybody getting is does anybody know what I'm talking about? Has anybody been there before? I'm saying, I know, I know not everybody, I, I know not everybody that um, grew up in the church, you know, I'm saying, you make, people make the, make bad choices and make bad, you know, decisions or whatever, and we know, I'm saying, sometimes when we read this and I'm, I'm preaching or whatever, I know some people out there know what I'm talking about, because we, not everybody grew up in like, uh, you know, Candyland. I said, we know that some of us know, the, some of us know what God has done in our lives and how he's cleaned us up. I'm saying we came to God dusty, and, my, and, he, and he gave us a uh, he gave us a divine bath. Amen. All right, let's go to for, uh, 2 Corinthians uh, chapter five, verses fourteen to twenty-one. Our firm decision. This is a message. Our firm decision is to work from this focus focus center. One man died for everyone. That puts everyone in the same boat. Everyone's in the same boat. That's really important right there because sometimes we tend to see people, well, they look different than me, they're in a different boat. We're all in the same boat. All in the same boat. See that into our spirit. He included everyone in his death so that everyone could also be included in his life, a resurrection life, a far better life than people who ever lived on their own. So this right here, this is a focus center. This is the epicenter of Christianity. One man died for everybody. That's the epicenter of Christianity. That's where it all starts right here. We all have the same building blocks and foundation in life. One man saved us because we couldn't save ourselves. Right. Verse 16. Because of this decision, we don't evaluate people by what they have or how they look. Man. Paul's, Paul's taking some knowledge to us. It sounds like that to me today. You know what? Sometimes we you know what we have. Sometimes, you know, we look at people and we look at what they have and, and how they look. And that's not what God tells us to do. We have to evaluate people from God's guidelines, not our guidelines. We look at the Messiah that, that way once and got it all wrong, as you know. That's what happened. You know, people looked at Jesus the same way. And they got it wrong. We certainly don't look at him that way anymore. No, we don't. We don't look at Jesus that way anymore. We know he's our Messiah. Now we look inside, and what we see is that anyone united with the Messiah gets a fresh start. He's created new. The old life is gone. A new life emerges. Look at it. All this comes from the God who settled the relationship between us and him. And then called us to settle our relationship with each other. God put the world square with him with himself through the Messiah, giving the world a fresh start by offering forgiveness of sins. God has given us the task of telling everyone what he is doing. We're Christ's representatives or ambassadors. We're ambassadors. And it's our task, it's our task to tell everyone what he's doing. We have, we're, we have to tell everyone what we're doing. You know what? I know God makes <clears throat> God makes some people introverts, extroverts, and in between. But we, when you know what, we have to. We should feel compelled to tell people about the gospel. 
And I'm not talking about like, you know, the, like some, sometimes, you know, Jehovah Witnesses come to your house and say things to you. I'm just all just like, you know what? When you're talking to people, if it's the right opportunity and God compels you to tell, you know, tell somebody, tell somebody about something about God, do it. Because that might be that person's first encounter with a Christian. And we've all had that first. We've all had that first encounter with Christianity with, by somebody outside of our family. And that really, that, that, that really, that, that, that encounter is very important because that, that, can, that can define your Christianity. That can cause you to continue walking or take a step. That's why we got to be careful. Apostle Paul's telling us we got to be careful. Because I don't want to put, I want somebody's blood on my hand knowing that I did something, I said something to basically keep them, you know, keep them away from God. That's, that's a harsh stuff. That's just like being a drug dealer and giving somebody the drugs and they overdose. How would you, that would be really hard to deal with. You know, that you see their obituary in the paper and you're just like, man, you know what? I'm the person who did that. I gave them that drug that caused them to overdose. But it's the same thing when God, God might tell you to, um, to talk to that person. But you know what? You know that person died a sinner. You know what? I was part of that. The reason why that person went to hell. And that's that's the truth of uh, that's the truth of the matter. All right, let's continue. God uses us, uses us to persuade men and women to drop their differences and enter into God's work of making things right between them. He uses us. He could have used, he could have created some robots and, and been like, you know what, these are these are my God robots. But he uses us. Even with all our flaws. We all have flaws. No matter what I'm saying, I like to know, and, and I know, and I'm not and I'm not trying to make anybody feel bad or anything. I'm saying, but we do all have flaws. I have flaws, you guys have flaws. That's 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 a given. Um, we're speaking for Christ Himself now. Become friends with God. He already He's already a friend with you. How, you ask, in Christ. God put the wrong on him who never did anything wrong so we could be put right with God. Man, you know, digging this like, you know, Jesus took the burden of sin so we could be right with God. That's why, you know, that's why, that's why you know, every day we really, I'm not saying that, you know, that, that we, you know, we, we think in a human, you know, like secular terms or human terms, but we, you know, he did us like, big favor. He, we owe a lot to him. You know, that's why, you know, when we're a slave to Jesus, you know what I'm saying? We, man, if, if it wasn't for God, when we die, we wouldn't have any type of hope, any type of future. We would just go straight to hell. Amen. That just makes you, that makes you think right there. That just, that right there, that just should cause you to just feel a light inside of your spirit and be like, you know what? I need to tell people. I need to live for God every day. You know what? Whatever he tells me to do, I'm going to be obedient. But when we make our, when we make Jesus Lord of life, we begin our new life. We make our, we become our new, we, we begin our new life. We trade darkness for light. We trade sin for life. But in order, in order to grow mature in our new life, we must understand the power of focus. Because once you make that choice to become a Christian and make Jesus Lord of your life, you still got to remain, you got to still have focus because you have, to, you have to focus on God because if you don't, you're going to turn back and look at your old life. And that your old life, it may be familiar to you, but it doesn't mean that it's right. Familiar doesn't mean right. In order to, in order to have a victorious life, Christian life, we have, it has to be a strong focus on God and his word. And if it's, if it's on God and God's word, we have the right focus. And if it's, if it's on something else, we're going to be in trouble. But the truth is that we have to keep our mind, our mind, our mind. And we have to keep our mind and our heart and our life right at all times. We have to put on the. We have. We need. We have to put on the the um, um, the armor of God. We have to put it on. Six armors of God, but we need to put. We need to put on the armor of God every day to protect ourselves. So if we don't, we're just we're basically a sitting duck. And if you think about it, 
It only takes one moment of being unfocused to change the course of your destiny. Just look at Adam and Eve. They took their eyes off of God for a brief moment and sent entered into the world. And we're paying for it right now. That's why we have churches right now to, 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 to preach the gospel, to spread the gospel. You know, one moment, one letdown, one let, one letdown, enter sin into the world. And sin has, has separation, it's caused separation from us and God. It has caused many to go astray and, and, and it sabotaged many people's destinies because of sin. Sin is, uh, sin, sin is, 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 is wreaked havoc on God's creation. That's why God hates sin, because it's, it's, God is righteous and sin is not righteous. So we just you know, but, oh man. We just have to focus. I won't ever, ever say focus. Focus. But I truly believe that God has gifted and ordained or individuals to do certain things in life or go certain places, but it never happened because the person never understood the power of focus. I really believe that, you know, we meet people every day, some new, some, some people we know, but they never understood, they never had the power of focus on God, and they've never fulfilled their calling in their race of life. That's, that's, that's really sad because, you know, you have people that are just called to be pastors, called to be accountants, called to be teachers, but they chose their own route in life. And if that, they're just not fulfilling God's, um, for, uh, he, he's, he, they're not fulfilling the blueprint God has for the life. Because everybody has a blueprint for the life. But, but without focus, the alternative is basically just walking around in a state of blurriness. With no sense of anything. And these people that are walking in a without focus in a blurry state, they're just being used and abused by Satan. Satan loves Satan loves blurry places. He loves blurry focus. He loves when it's no focus. He loves it. Let's turn to Proverbs 29, 1a. This verse right here says, where there is no vision or focus, the people perish. You know, people back in the, in the if you read the Bible, you know, the, uh, the nation of Israel perished. There's, other been, uh, there's been other people, other nations and people that have perished because of lack of vision. This, which is due because of the lack of focus. And that's really sad. Everybody say, put on your glasses. So I can see. All right. That's what we have to do. We got to put, put our spiritual glasses on so we can see, so we can focus. Amen. All right. Before I close, I want to leave you with five ways to keep your focus on God. Five ways to keep your focus on God. And I'm not Dr. Phil. I'm not a psychologist, but I'm saying this is some things that God told me to say. How many people watch Dr. Phil? Okay, we got one person. Okay. <laughs> I used to watch him a little bit, but I don't really the tape trail. I don't have time to watch him anymore. All right, so the first way to keep your focus on God is start and end your day with God. If you start your day with God, you're likely to focus on him throughout the day. If you end your day with God, your focus is on God at the end of the day. And I really believe if you start and end with your, end your, start your day and end your day with God, it's going to be a lot easier in the middle of the day. In the middle of the day is where a lot of the stuff happens. That's where, that's where you, know, you make a lot of choices, a lot of decisions, a lot of things happen to you. And you want to start your day in a, in a, in a, in a positive manner. You want to start your day um, praying, doing a devotional, whatever, whatever, whatever God tells you, whatever way that you like to you know, connect with God. Because we all connect with God in different ways, right? But starting and ending your day is always important. When you start your your day with God. <clears throat> All right, number two. Second way to keep your focus on God is to examine your heart. And I've been talking about examination a lot like the last couple of weeks. There's something about examination that really, it helps you. It, 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 it causes you to really focus on what is my relationship with God? How am I doing with God? And if you examine your heart and your mind, that will just tell you things that you need to change. You go to the doctor, you do an, he does an examination, and he says, hey, buddy, you got to quit eating like uh, seafood because your cholesterol is high. 
And it's, it's just something about examination that God wants us to examine ourselves at all times. When you examine yourself, God will, the Holy Spirit will talk to you and be like, you know what? You really need to quit thinking like that. Because you know what? And he's, I'm sure he's not saying it like that. He's, he's going to say it lovely, lovely. You know what? <laughs> you really, you know, think of, you know, you need to think about that. You know, like he said, you know, say son or daughter. You know why? Because, you know what? That's not really in my word. That's not in my word. That's not who I am. And it really, and when God speaks to your heart and, and talks to you, you know, that really, that gives you revelation what you need to do. And he'll give you strategies. He'll give you things that you need to do in order to change what you need to change. He'll clean your closet off for you. Because we are, you know, no matter, no matter who you are, as long as you're living, you, we have, a, 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 we have a, a tendency to put stuff in our closet that shouldn't be there. And it's okay saying that. And that's why we got to clean it regularly because, you know what, I don't want to find something in my closet that shouldn't be there. You, you know, when you, when you do find it, you just got to throw it out. So examine it in your heart. That's the a, that's a, uh, second way to keep your focus on God. Number three, meditate on God's word. I don't know about you, but sometimes, uh, I don't know if you've, uh, if you've actually had a verse or a couple of verses where, you know, it's just been in your mind and you just kind of play it over and over and over. And if that is just like you meditate on it, then it starts becoming, it starts getting seeded into your spirit. Then if that in your mind, then you start looking out of that. Meditation is, you know, meditation, meditating on God's word is a, is a good thing. It's a healthy thing. It's something, you know, God, the Bible tells us that we should do. Because if you med if you don't, if you're meditating, if you're not meditating on God's word, you might be meditating on something else. And that's going to get you in trouble. You might be meditating on something like negative things, or it might be uh, meditating on um, lies. And the devil, and the devil knows all these things right here. That you know that I'm going to, I'm going to say he knows all these things. And he's, and that's why he's always trying to get us to meditate on things. Oh, that person, that person did something bad to me. Then, then, then before you know, ten years down the road, you're talking about the same thing. I wish I would have said that to that person. I wish I would have. I wish I would have punched that kid in the that guy in my face or whatever. And you're meditating on it, and then it, it just eats you up. And you're focused. And when you come to church, yeah, maybe your focus is kind of it might be on God. If that, then when you get back into normal, just like your regular setting, you start you start meditating on that 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 event or that act, and you're just like you know what, man. Then, God is not the equation. It's just no more God. It's just about your meditation on meditation on like negative things or or that bad events. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Saying we can get trapped really easy in our in, in, in things that have happened to us, and we have to be careful. You, we don't want to live out of a place where you know we're thinking about things that happened like 15 years ago, because it could easily happen. And I know we know some. We, I'm sure we probably know some people that that act that way. 1976. He said I was uh, a bad man. It's 2021 now, buddy. You've been you've been you've been doing that stuff. You've been you've been messing with 45 years. You've been you've been um, playing it over your head. I think it's about time to change. Number four, fourth way to uh, to keep your focus on God, which kind of goes with meditation, is renewing your mind. We're called to renew our mind. So if you're renewing your mind, that means the, the old stuff, the, the stuff that's in your mind might need to go away so you can get new stuff in there, new information, new understanding, new revelation. I don't know about you, but sometimes when I, when I read the Bible, sometimes, you know, God will give me another revelation about something, you know, that I do have an understanding of it, but he'll give me a more understanding of it. So it renews my mind even deeper. It's nothing, it's, it, 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 it's a, really a shame when you have a Christian who loves God and, and walks with God, but they don't renew their mind. And they're stuck back, you know, stuck back 40 years ago or 30 years ago, right? And they're not renewing their mind on a, on a regular basis. Because the thing about it is God, the Holy Spirit is always talking to us. God is always talking to us and he's trying to renew our mind. And we have to let him work through us or we're just going to be the same old dusty apple. We want to be a fresh apple. Yes. We got to let God do what God wants to do. And cook and, and, 
incorporate it all. We get a tendency to, to work on the, to to uh, get to get fixated on um, on traditions and preferences and ways of doing things. Let God do what He wants to do. My gosh, that's why so many churches are dying because they won't let God move. Man, he's got these, these churches and stuff like that. We've been doing this over 50 years the same way. Don't tell me that God hasn't said anything to you in those 50 years to do something different. Let God move. Christianity, some churches are so stale, man. I'm saying they're so stale. They're like stale bread. Stale bread. Nobody wants to eat no stale bread, of, um, a bologna sandwich on a, some stale bread. You need some fresh bread. You need our daily bread. Let God just let God do his thing and stuff like that. Renew your mind. Man. All right. I'm sorry, man. I'm sorry. Number five, the fifth way to keep your focus on God. Eliminate distractions. And this is a big one right here. Sometimes, man, you gotta let people go. If they're in your life and they're causing, they're just causing you to lose focus, um, on, put their focus on them or something else and not God, you gotta let them go. Not in a bad way, not in a harsh way, but you gotta just let go, release your friends from you because they're pulling you down, they're dragging you down. And you already got so much strength in your legs. Sometimes it's 500 pounds of distraction um, on your legs and your legs are gonna buckle and crack and you're gonna fall down with them. So eliminating distractions. It's tough though. It's tough when we get familiar. It's tough when you don't have friends. It's tough when you when you I'm saying when you have things that are that are familiar to you, but when God is calling you to something different. And you know that it's distracting to you. You gotta let go of stuff. You gotta say, you know what, God, give me friends. Give me friends, God, because they're, they're out there. We got lots of people in America, don't we? We got neighbors, don't we? Maybe God wants you to, to go out there and talk to them, maybe a little bit. Invite them over for dinner. Have some coffee. Because the people that you're hanging out right now are causing you distraction. They're causing you to lose focus on God. It could be a job. Maybe your job is distracting you. You get home and all you think about is a job. Maybe it's time to get some new employer. Maybe it's time to um, change jobs. And I'm not, I'm not saying I'm not saying TV or anything like that. But I'm just telling you, sometimes it could be a job that's distracting you from God. Because when you get home, you're just like, man, I'm eating and breathing, and, and, and I'm just saying, you know the, you know the, um, you, you, I don't know, man, it's just, it's, it could be a job thing. It could be a friend thing. It could be lots of things, but you, we got to be careful. We got to be careful that we don't let distractions get in our way of a relationship with God, because distractions are powerful, but God's more powerful. All right, I want to show you this picture on the screen right here before we go into prayer. It says, you get what you focus on, so focus on what you want. If you want, if you want good friends, focus on good friends. If you want a strong relationship with God, focus on your relationship with God. Just, just remember, just remember, your focus is always going to determine your outcome. I know God's put in my heart to focus on the community, and that's what I've been focusing on, and that's what I'm going to continue just um, driving. That's just going to drive me to, you know, drag me to outreach and drive me to evangelism and drive me to 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 meeting, you know, to get to talking to people that may not know God or maybe they back or whatever. So that's what my focus is on, and I'm going to continue. I'm going to continue. I'm going to continue to. Live out what God's focus on, um, that the focus he put on my heart, in my spirit, I'm going to continue living out of that focus. Because the, the moment that I change my focus is the moment I shouldn't be up here, I shouldn't be leading the church. Right? All right. All right, if you guys can if I, if I bring all the hands right now. Dear God, I, just, I thank you for today, God. I thank you for this message about focus, God. God, we are called to focus our whole our whole existence on you, God. That means that our thoughts, our behaviors, our, our mind, everything we have to we have to focus and and, and continue um, <coughs> looking at you and not looking away and looking behind us. The only thing that's behind us 
Many times things behind us are bad thoughts or just bad experiences. Many times that's the same thing for things on the side, God, but we got to continue looking forward. Don't, we cannot look backwards. You have, you have, you have, you have, you have, um, new glories for us, God. You have new things you want us. To, you're, you're calling us to do as, a, as a individuals and as a church. God, we're not. We're not. Our, God, you. We're not. We are. We are about. We are about our focus on you. We're not about focusing on tradition or preferences or anything like that. We just want to do your will, God. We want to be obedient to your call, God, as individuals and as a church. And God, just you know, just just thank you for. You know, just thank you for all these individuals who just, you know, who are partnered with us, with Lansing Calvary, who have this focus on you, because that's what's going to take take to reach the community and to reach the lost, to be the hand and feet and the voice of Jesus. Right now, uh, if there's anybody right here, uh, anybody here today, or anybody that's on uh, that's watching on Facebook, um, if Jesus is not the Lord of your life, if you could raise your hand right now. All right, I can't see you if you're watching. If you may be watching, you might be watching on Facebook. I can't see you, but I'm just going to, I'm just going to just assume that it could be you. So if you're watching, I would like you to repeat after me. Dear God, I know that I'm a sinner, and I ask for forgiveness. I believe that you died for my sins. I believe that you died for my bad choices and rose from the dead. Today I turn from my sins and invite you to come into my life. Fill me with your spirit so I can know you, serve you, and follow you the rest of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, if that was you today, you made the best decision in your life. You are saying you are, you are a child of God. You were a child of God, but you made use these words. The words have power, and these words have put your name in the book of life. Right now, I just encourage you to, if you have no church, I encourage you to plug into a church so they can walk with you because, you know, right now you're, you're a wanted man, a wanted, a wanted woman, a wanted child, because the devil knows those words that you just said has snatched you out of the pits of hell into God's kingdom. So I encourage you to get plugged into a church. If you have no church, we welcome you here at Lansing Calvary. We're a multicultural, um, Bible-believing church who believes in the, the power of Trinity. And we would love to walk with you. We have some good people here. Yes, we do. We have some good people that would love to just walk with you in like a new, um, new adventure in life. All right. So, so uh, praise God that you made that choice. All right, uh, right now, kind of, if I could have the prayer warriors come up here. <clears throat> if I have the prayer warriors right here come up here. So these are individuals, and if you'd like to be on a prayer team, uh, you know, we do have, uh, you know, we are always looking for people to pray. If, you're, if you feel compelled, I like that feel compelled because Dan, Dan pointed out one day. If you feel compelled to, uh, you know, join our prayer team, We'd love, you to, we'd love you to come up here and, you know, just to pray and get, in, get into the rotation. But for the rest of us, if you have any prayer needs, if you have anything that's uh, bothering you, anything that's, you know, that you're dealing with right now that you would like prayer for, come up here and pray with these prayer warriors and warriettes. And uh, um, they would love to pray for you. If you'd like to come up to the altar and pray by yourself, that's fine too, though. But just you know what? All I'm saying, I just encourage you to just be obedient to God and what he's calling you to do. If you feel like God wants you to, you know, pray about something or do something, please just do it and stuff, because we're called to a life of obedience. Yeah. All right, for the rest of us, I'll always, I'll always uh, say a prayer. It's a benediction prayer. It's a, a prayer of blessing spoken to everybody before we begin to worship. And I'd like to pray that right now. May the Lord bless you and protect you this week. May the Lord smile on you and be gracious to you this week. May the Lord show you his favor and give you his peace this week. God, I just ask that, you know what, I ask you that you give each one of us here, give us divine appointments with people outside this building. 
God, wherever it is, God, wherever it is, God, we, 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 we pledge to be obedient to you. If you ask us to pray for somebody at the gas station, in the middle of a donut shop, at Sam's or wherever, God, we, plan, we, we, we pledge that we will pray for that person. God, just use us, God. Use us like the way that you want us to use, be used, God. Use this church. Use us as, as us individuals the way that you want to use us, God. We want to be, we want to be a church. We want to be a church that's on fire for you. When people, when people come to this door, they can, they can feel the, 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 the Holy Spirit is so heavy that almost, it almost knocks them out. God, just thank you for what you're doing at this church. God, thank you for giving us the finances and thank you for giving us the work, the workers, God, to just fulfill your commission, God. And we thank you. We just thank you for everything that you're doing at this church, God. We, you know what? We could not do it without you. So we just give you thanks and we give you praise and we give you glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.